we realized it was near Pyargapa. We figured out through severe Sarkar's help that it was in Karnakar. And we went there with Pyargapa. It is, it is now connected. Right, pink, right, orange. Which I guess has its own aesthetics. I mean, who are we to judge? We were somewhat taken aback. And people went crazy. We showed yes. them the pictures. Yeah, as soon as we opened up our binder, we had this binder of all the photographs. As soon as we opened up, we were like in madness. We were we started to understand the feeling of being rock stars, which is really amazing, I have to say. One reason we don't want to go back. <laughs> we're rock stars in India. Um, all kinds of conversations about, about the temples, um, just attracting a whole group of people, which was really, really we, fantastic. We were invited for lunch by the priest. Um, we really had some marvelous contacts and connections. Uh, unfortunately, we did not speak Bangla or Hindi, uh, which is, that's for the next trip. And, um, but we were able to communicate well enough, and having those photographs really was remarkable because people could see the old photos, the new photos, and people were just stunned and thrilled to see that. That's the complex today. And we went with our daughter, who was there holding the binder in the right hand corner. So then, that was over, and um, we continued to do research. When we started this research years ago, the internet did not have anything about the 10th PTU. We searched everywhere we could find it. There was no mention anywhere whatsoever. Uh, as uh, the older members of the audience know, uh, not everything is digitized. Young folks think that if it's not on the net, it doesn't exist, but this is not true. So there are archives everywhere, and those archives contain information by the millions of feet. And it's going to take forever, if at all, to have all of this material digitized. And so one of the things that we've always loved is physical research, going to places, looking at things. It makes a big difference. But we did finally find that the army, the records of World War II, are not at the National Archives, they're not at the Library of Congress. The army records are at Maxwell Air Force Base in Huntsville, Alabama. Who knew? So, so uh, and Jerry had gone to uh, the Library of Congress uh, for another project, and National Archives and had shown them our album of photos and they'd never seen anything like it. So even though what, what I did find was this uh, negative, four by five negatives that had um, that had the same handwriting as our tech PTU with the date. So we knew that the processing was done here in India and um, that it was done at a, at a lab that was also processing the reconnaissance photos that were being taken in West Bengal. That was the, that was the American presence here. That what we knew at the time was that the Americans were here and taking reconnaissance photographs. Um, and they were going to be, they were, they were flying over Burma uh, and through China and attacking Japan through that route over the, the Burma Hub. Or doing the planning for that. But we found very, very, very little information on the 10th PTU. Because at the time, in our story of the world change, um, we thought that our photographer was completely, totally linked with the 10th PTU, because that's what it said. Right, and only last week we discovered new information. But anyway, for the three years uh, before we came back here, we continued to do research, we read through microfilm records, we went uh, to other archives and we started to pick up more and more of the story. And we did find out that in 1945, uh, well, from the late, from 41 to 45, that there was a presence here and that uh, we were at, the, at that time doing this reconnaissance work, as Jerry had mentioned. But in May of 1945, the unit was disbanded. And so our theory, our operating theory, which now we might have to modify, I think is still basically correct, is that our man was part of this reconnaissance photography group, but that once the unit was disbanded in May of 1945, they were not reassigned for another month. They were reassigned to Okinawa, but for the month of May of 1945, according to what we have come across, they had nothing to do. 
So some people must have gone playing pool or drinking or hanging out. Not our guy. Our guy took his 4 by 5 and went out into the village, villages surrounding wherever he was located, and we didn't know where he was located. We had no idea where this was. We knew it was somewhere in West Bengal, but that's all that we knew. Four of our photographs were dated 1944, so I'm not buying into that theory all that much. We're still discussing this. So then we were fortunate, and we applied for and received a, a Fulbright Nehru Fellowship, uh, which enabled us to uh, leave our other responsibilities in Chicago and to focus solely on this. Um, and we have been here since November, and unfortunately going back in April. Um, so, but it's a fair amount of time, four and a half months, and so we've been able to focus entirely on this project from morning till night. And uh, for those of you out there who make your living through the freelance world, let me tell you, it's very nice to have one project, and you don't have to worry about anything else but focusing just on that. And so this is Dr. Gautam Sangupta and uh, Indrajit Chowdhury from the from the from ABP newspaper who were enormously helpful in identifying the possible locations for our temples. Uh, this is the archive at, at AIIS. And again, for people who only do research on the internet, there is a real joy in being in these places where there are, this place has thousands upon thousands of images. And this is the kind of work that we did. We pulled out, you know, anything that, for example, this is a, 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 our Kali temple that we were trying to identify at the exact location. Well, as you can see, all of these are different temples, and they all look a little bit alike. But our Kali temple is just slightly different, although we did find, we finally did a match and found exactly where our Kali temple was. And this is it, this is it here. And it, it came to sometimes the, the, like in the doorway, there's scalloped edges. And sometimes it came to even like counting how many of the scalloped edges there were, or counting the ribs on the side of the building, or the tiles, or, or the brickwork. It, it came to that, these minute differences between some of these temples. So this is a photo from 1945. And here is a great story. So we had a driver. So we went into the train room to, to, to Kharagpur, and we stayed in the hotel, and they recommended a driver. And so we got the driver, and he said, oh, sure, I know where the Kali Temple is. Oh, right. He had no idea where the Kali Temple was. So we were going up and down streets and through alleys and around, and stopping everybody and asking them where the Kali Temple was. And everybody said, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. And it took forever. So finally, we were in this little alley, and we saw a temple that looked like another temple, which we'll show you in a while. And I said, stop the car. So we stopped the car and ran out and I started looking at this other temple. And of course, attracted a crowd and right. attracted this group of little boys. And when we realized that this was not the temple that we were looking for, they said, you know, I live near another temple. Do you want to come see? We said, yes, of course we want to come see. So, so they led us down this little alley and made a right turn and left turn and right turn. And I described it as being like the reverse pint pipers. You know, we were following them. <laughs> and it's cute. And they all had their backpacks and they were all eager to show us. School boys, yeah. And so, there it was. the corner, and that's our first vision. When we see it, we go, oh my god, this is it. This is actually it. Yeah, and there and she is, like in all her glory, and like she's just an amazing, amazing colleague temple. And you know, we counted everything, looked at everything, and there's absolutely no question, this is. And this is where our soldier was, and this is where our soldier stood. Yeah. And you know, we we are we are uh, I mean we are academics, well, kind of you know from time to time. But we're not doing this research in order to do full research on all these temples. We are tracing the footsteps of this man. We want to know where he went, and of course we want the ultimate question: Why? Why? And why did he decide to do? And then, of course, you know, one of the little boys uh, said, oh, my, my dad, is so his father came over, and they said, oh, why don't you go get the key? So we got the key, so we went inside, and we got to see what it looked like. And it's this quite remarkable folk art Kali, which is a particular style. Uh, we have a very good friend back in Chicago who is an anthropologist, uh, Ralph Nicholas, who is with the University of Chicago. 
and we sent him this picture because we thought it was unusual. It turns out he's doing a book on this kind of, and you know, temple. And we've back and forth, back and forth on, on emails now, and <laughs> these kind of um, uh, idols are constructed as you start with a with stone, which I, I'm assuming is a shimmering stone, but I'm, I'm not sure. And then as people start approaching it, and then they start adding things to it and building it and building onto it. And so this, this idol was really built by many different people, which is such a true folk art. I mean, it's so amazing. The teeth, there were like these um, um, oyster shell teeth. They were, they were absolutely fantastic. And that the, it just, it is an incredibly powerful So this, this image was one that really motivated us. This is, thought, this is their favorite image. I mean, you've got the truth coming out of the top. You've got three guys standing there in the middle. You have beautiful lines, and it's like in the middle of nowhere. It's, and so our you know, goal was we have to find this temple. That was like going to be our prize. It's going to be in the middle of the jungle. Middle of the jungle. And this is where we're going to find it. So, yeah, I see some of you laughing. Yeah, right, yeah. You know what's yeah. coming. So things have totally changed. Of course, it's been seven years. Just about. So this was, and after we did a lot of research, we figured out it was in Malansha, which used to be a separate town, but is now completely taken over by, by Kharagpur. And through uh, through uh, Indrajit Chowdhury, he found this. And we did a lot of research, and we're good researchers. And we never found photographs of that temple in America or online or at the University of Chicago Library or at any of the libraries. Never found anything. We mentioned it to Indrajit. He goes, oh. And within an hour, he emails us this picture from a book had, in his collection. Yeah, he has apparently an amazing, amazing library um, and collections of, um, uh, of books. So, so it's the same, it in his same temple. So this is the one where we were driving along. And I said, ah, stop the car. And it's not the same. It's similar. But it's just to show like how similar it's the same. lines are similar, but it's not the same. But this is the same. And this is. And the honeymoon was over, <laughs> our bubble was burst. Um, but we found it. We, we found, found it. it, this is it. Um, it's not in the middle of the jungle. No, it's, it's completely um, now surrounded, but it's still quite beautiful. But it's interesting, I've been writing a blog about this whole experience, and um, so the posting was the romance of old photographs. And basically what we were talking about is how, how we, we fantasize, and we look at photos, and we imagine certain and so for me, that photo, that photo was like the Shire, you know, from, from Tolkien, from the Lord of the Rings. It was, you know, the peaceful, the beautiful, it's secluded, everything is green, everything is one. Forget it. Reality is completely, totally different. Now, of course, you know, the portico that they built here, the porch, is fabulous for the worshippers because it protects them from the sun. It gives them a place to meditate and to worship. Visually, it's terrible. So, so. It, it, unfortunately, if they had they built it a few feet further back, it would have, they, they totally obstructed this absolutely beautiful piece of architecture. And on that point, can, can people silence their cell phones, please? Uh, so, thank you. inside, we discovered the old photo of the temple, what it used to look like. Yeah, so this is so, what, and it only started to get renovated, in, I guess, relatively. After 1979, it only started like in the 80s, they yeah. started to, to fix it up. So this confirmed it. This is definitely the Nandasaur Temple in Malansha, uh, which is now part of Karapur. And we met the, the, the current Pandit, yeah. the current um, um, the priest, who is absolutely incredible. Again, really supportive, and he, he had his devotees, um, you know, clean everything out, wash everything out, and he came in and he a, a service for us. He did a blessing us, for us. And a blessing. Yeah. And because we brought back it these was, photos. It was remarkable. I mean, it was absolutely remarkable. I mean, I have to say that we keep, a friend described us in India as wise, wide-eyed children. And, and, that's, and that's what we that's are. Kind of we, we keep walking around, but she has to stop me because I keep going, wow, look at that, look at that, look at this. Don't stop, just stop. And like we're, we're but this was this was a really touching thing because yeah, you know the people valued the fact that we brought these pictures back, mm -hmm. and then they photographed it with their own phones. <laughs> <laughs> so. And here's our. There's our.
yeah, 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 yeah,